All right, so other than that, I did have one big challenge yesterday, interesting challenge, a very interesting one. Now, my first objective is <clears throat> the objective of to be always ready to die. And I think the name says it all about what this objective is about. And I, I don't really talk about it very often. I, I run through uh, mental uh, exercises in my mind about how I would handle circum certain circumstances. Um, but I don't talk about it much, mainly out of respect for those that might be, in fact, um, facing down death. And I don't want to be flippant or uh, careless with my thoughts or philosophizing, philosophizing on a subject that may be very close to us, to some. So I leave it at the high levels, but I do endeavor to prepare myself to die by um, making sure that I, I have my life affairs in order, my relationships in order, and my life's work done, if not finished, as I like to say. But I had an interesting incident happen yesterday that gave me a chance to weigh in a little bit on this subject. I was uh, running on the beach. Uh, in fact, I was on Huntington Beach, and I was just approaching the pier uh, from the north side, a beautiful low tide. So I was able to, to run way out on the, on the sand flats further than I'd ever seen the, the, the water receive, although I've only lived here for three months. It was the lowest tide I'd seen for sure. When my phone rang, which was in my hand, um, I answered it, and, and it was my physician, my doctor. And he said, can we talk? And I said, I, yes. And uh, I, I knew he was going to call. That's why I had my, hand, my phone handy, because uh, we had an, a phone appointment for this afternoon to go over some t um, results of, some, of an exam. And he called, and he said, it's about that tumor. Um, I have a tumor here in my uh, abdomen, and it's been there for a long time. Uh, and doctors have looked at it in the past and decided, uh, two separate doctors, that it was benign. But the second doctor warned me that, um, well, they both told me it'll grow. But, but the second doctor warned me, and this was 10 years ago, that it could be a problem in the future. Um, and he recommended that I have it removed back then. And maybe I should have done, followed his, his advice. I didn't. Yumiko was asking me the same question last night. Why didn't you have it removed? <laughs> anyway, I didn't. And it's gotten bigger. Um, bad me. And so anyway, I, I thought maybe it's time to, to do what the doctor said and have it removed. So I went and saw my doctor. They did um, an initial examination. And the doctor called me yesterday at the, just at the foot of the, at the pier there to tell me that um, he wanted further tests, that there, was, there were irregularities in there. And he sounded nervous. Um, and he told me uh, he, he wants to have um, an ultrasound and uh, further tests. And I thought, okay, so he gave me a phone number to call to schedule the appointment, and I went on with my run. Now, running back from the Huntington Beach Pier, the one mile back to the Tower Lifeguard Tower 18, where I keep my shoes <laughs> and my stuff, my towel, I had a, a mile to think. Here it is, Kurt. Not a prognosis of death by a long shot, you know, but the, uh, the doctor calling me back about a, about a growing tumor that uh, you were warned about in the, in the past with, you know, a sense of uh, anxiety or anxiousness in his voice telling you we need more tests. Now, certainly not a prognosis of death at all, but something to, something to weigh on, something to consider. I found myself, and this is where I'll be frank, I found myself um, at ease, literally thinking to myself, well, if, it's, if, it's, if I'm going to die, I'm going to die. And uh, I just immediately had to ask myself, well, how far, if it turns out that it's really bad, how far do you want to go, Kurt? And my decision is within a reasonable amount of time, I don't want to uh, you know, break my family of, um, of, of our assets. Or, ca or cause undue uh, pain and difficulty unto anybody. So I would take reasonable treatments. Of course, I would require more thought and talk with my wife. But this is just me doing a, a one-mile run summary of what I would do. I thought I would take, uh, if it turns out it is something bad, um, I will take whatever reasonable steps I can take to um, uh, mitigate uh, the, uh, the symptoms, hopefully to, re to maybe overcome it, mitigate the symptoms and, and hold back death. If, if, it's, if it's a dangerous one. Um, but beyond that, I would um, let myself die. 
And, and by the time I reached the uh, lifeguard tower 18, I had a, a simple plan in place, you know, um, fight it in a reasonable manner, um, but not, uh, not too extremes. I, I will, I will accept death if it's come for me. And, you know, there were a couple of, and I was satisfied with that result. Now let's see what would happen. I asked myself if uh, it turns out that it really is the case, but I felt at the moment that it was, it was pretty, uh, I was, that it, this is, this is my true feeling on the matter. And I'll add just a little bit more. You know, I, I have long considered that if something came to that end and, uh, there was no easy way out that I would find a way out myself. And so that was also on my mind as well. Now, that's a lot to think about in the course of a mile. Now, I got home uh, from my run, and frankly, I didn't even think about it, and I didn't even tell you Miko yet. I thought, I'll just go about my business. We'll talk about it later, because we could take a dog walk in the afterwards. I thought, uh, I'll, uh, I'll set, clean everything up, settle, take care of the dogs, and then we'll talk about it later. I didn't want to worry her. I don't want to, but, you know, adults have to face reality, right? So, again, nothing yet, just the concern from the doctor. And um, uh, it was mainly his voice that, that kind of got me, you know, and his description of irregularities and something something we need to investigate, etc. Uh, maybe this is a cool, matter of course. I don't know. I've never, I've never had this happen before. But I went about my business and was doing my stuff when the phone rang again. And uh, this is like 7 p.m. now. It's, it's my doctor again, right? He calls back and he says, he says how was the run? <laughs> I, said, I said, it was good, it was good. All right, good. He says, well, I want to talk to you some more. And um, apparently he'd been talking to the radiologist uh, or somebody uh, who, between our, the first call and, then, and the next one. He says, Kurt... She says, um, we, 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 I was talking to others, and, and we need to get that out of you. So um, why don't you, he gave me a different number. He says, don't bother with the other number We're not, about the test. We're going to get you uh, on track with surgery. So he gave me another number to arrange with the surgeon uh, for, to, for pre-surgical consultation. So, boy, said that way, that sounds a little more uh, uh, serious, doesn't it? So that's where I stand right now. I went out with well, my dog, walked with Yumiko, and we talked, and uh, and she admonished me for not taking this care of this a decade ago. <laughs> Deservedly so. So I will call the uh, a second number today and make an appointment and take care of this after we're gone. Um, as for my mental state, nothing's changed. I still feel exactly the same way. And what's really interesting, and we'll see how this goes, is my test of this objective, which is to be always ready to die, is so far holding up well. I'm not feeling anxious about this. You know, I feel more anxious about deadlines at work than I do about this. I think it's because of my perspective on the universe. And again, we'll see what happens as, it, as, as things progress. But I think it's my perspective on the universe. You know, I, I don't believe I have a soul. I don't believe there's any God. I don't think there's any afterlife. There's no punishment or reward. I do believe that the science shows that the universe is going to uh, carry on for trillions of years, um, winding into cold, cold heat, in heat death, as they call it, right? Winding down into a, a cold, unified blanket of, um, of static emptiness, um, dark and cold. That's the universe's fate. What difference does it make if I'm a part of that empty nothingness for a few years or a decade or more longer than otherwise, right? I mean, if I if it turns out this is a tumor and there's something bad and it's maybe it's just sign of something else and uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, whoa, and what does it matter if I'm if I'm gone next year versus uh, a decade or more from now? Now. Of course, it does matter in very clear-cut and uh, 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 important ways with regard to my family, right? I mean, my let's look at the consequences, right? First of all, uh, my daughter isn't done with college and she hasn't started her own life and settled. 
and that is my last objective as a as a father um, in my active parenting years is to see my daughter safely into her own adult life. That's why I won't retire and go back to Japan until that is done. Even though I could retire today, and Yumiko and I could jet off now. Um, we won't. We'll stay behind until Emily is 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 out of school and settled. We want to be here. We don't want to leave her alone. Um, we don't want to leave her struggling, of course. So that's the very immediate one. Now, of course, Emily could get by. She could finish off on her own. Um, it would be a str more of a struggle without my uh, active contributions in parenting, etc. cetera, um, for all of that. She still needs us. That's one consequence. So I would like to stay at least a couple more years to see that through. A uh, consequence to my wife would be, uh, of course, she'd lose her partner. She'd uh, be facing uh, the, these latter years alone. And it would be a significant uh, hit on our pension. Um, my pension is mostly anchored on me. Um, so although she, we do have our, our retirement account savings and Social Security pending for both of us. So uh, we'd lose the Social Security mainline benefit for me, which is the bigger one. And we'd lose the uh, uh, pension, my pension, which is, um, uh, we, we wouldn't lose it, but it would be, it'd be demanded. It would go into uh, what are called survivor benefits, which are uh, uh, not as much as the uh, mainline benefits. So it would be an impact on Yumiko's long-term um, um, well-being. But she does have her father and her, um, uh, her sister back at home in a brand new home that they built together a couple of uh, years ago with an empty room. And they all have a very good relationship. So she could go back and, and live in that room with her, her family. And she'd be on, on, on the pension that I would leave her behind. She'd be doing just fine. <laughs> she'd, do, she'd do well. She'd do well. So, so she's, she'd be okay. As for me, um, my book is done. Going Alone is done if not finished. Literally, if I, if I, was, if I was told that I've got a, two weeks to live, and you better, what do you want to do to finish your book? Um, the only thing I would do is order a couple of, well, order a couple of copies to keep around, so that at least there's like a few more hard copies around. There's no more writing to do. It's all done, you know. Except unless I find more typos like I, like I did last week, or that one error that Andrew finally fi fi gratefully helped me overcome because I had to, I had, I had to add, I had cut and paste something wrong. <laughs> Silly me, but that's fixed. In fact, I redid that whole chapter of the Good Life. It's all in nice shape now. I worked hard on that on Sunday. Parker and Allie, my niece and nephew, yeah. I'd like to be there for them, see them through. Um, I would like to finish my Dr. Johnson series. <laughs> I've, got, I've got 14 of these, yeah, and, I, and I haven't, I've got a long ways to go. I would like to read Walden again. I have a whole stack of books over there I'd like to read. Um, I, can, I can do without any of that. And... Parker and Allie will be fine. Yumiko will be fine. Emily will be fine. I am ready to die. All my relationships are in good order. Even my mom, who I, 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 I am, our relationship is in as good as order as I possibly can be. I'm, I'm ready to go to oblivion, but it's not a place to go. It's a state of nothing, right? I'm ready to, to join them. It's not even that. You don't join oblivion because there's nothing, there, there will be no me. I'm ready to be no more. That's fine. And it's not because I, I'm tired of this life. It's just because I think I'm abiding my first principle, which is to be always ready to die. And although I don't want to die, I have a lot of fun things and interesting things I have yet to do and that I want to do. If, it's, if it comes to that, then so be it. Even if it's at my own hands. Uh, which I will do if, uh, well, I hope I'll have the courage to do, if now, if not now, if it comes to that, where uh, rather than being a long, lingering, expensive, uh, dreadful um, suffering, uh, I will just uh, um, yeah, disappear, uh, and, and that'll be the end of me. <laughs> and I've broached that subject a little bit with both Yumiko and Emily. We need to talk about that a little more. That's a difficult one, right? I mean, I try to imagine myself on the other hand, right? Hmm. Although, you know, that maybe it's a consequence of my philosophy, right? I mean, like Eric, I mean, I've, I do have some experience with this, right? I mean, Eric, I mean, my, 
first book, no more looking out for number one, it's up there on the shelf, is my experience with my own best friend, um, you know, deciding to kill himself. And he and I talking about it, and I've been unsuccessful in, in, in convincing him not to do that, and he did it and he did it. Um, and then the impact that that had on my life, which was like, like a great meteor strike, meteor strike upon my life, which I must say sent me on the course of going alone. Eric's suicide, um, Eric's deliberate suicide, uh, and all that was wrapped up in my inability to understand what he had done was the thing that started me, headed me down this whole path that led to all the books that I've written, um, four books so far, um, the development of the Good Life Creed, the recovery of being a, a, a rather selfish, conceited man uh, to one that is focused on my, my obligations, my responsibilities, my, 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 my marriage, my commitment to the person on the, uh, that holds this other ring, the uh, family that we created, the uh, jobs that I take on, the responsibilities that I take on the job, and the efforts to make a, forge a good an interesting life uh, in an ironic life. Uh, as Christopher Hitchens might like to say, um, out of uh, the tapestry and the, the materials of the universe where none of that seems to really matter in any objective sense. So yeah. Others may, that don't hold that view might be similarly struck by a meteor strike of me offing myself if that was the case. But... It's a heavy butt. It might be a it might be a good thing for anyone who's interested in philosophy, but um, it might be just be a meteor strike to anybody else. Anyway, I'm getting way ahead of myself, am I not? I all I have, although it's it's not it's not a light thing to have to have a doctor two call, two phone calls from a doctor in the course of one evening, one to tell you we need to look into it, the other to to tell you we got to get that thing out of you. <laughs> so, I guess it's I guess it's not uh, vain or wanton. Uh, speculation. Yet, I feel fine about it. In fact, I didn't think about it at all last night after uh, talking to Yumiko about it, who took it in her to her t usual very sober. It's not like Yumiko's un unfeeling in any way, but she's the most sober, reasonable human being I've ever met, and uh, um, which is which is. <laughs> One of the most one of, one of the very endearing qualities I have of her. She's also the wisest person I've ever, I've ever met. She's also she's figured all of this stuff out before she even began thinking about it. Well, anyway, with that, that was the big challenge for yesterday, and it will remain a challenge until I either get this thing out of me or or I uh, or I mitigate it, whatever way they're going to do, or um, you know it does whatever it's going to do. In any case, I will be all right looking at what is within my control and what is not within my control, which is another one of my objectives. <clears throat> it's number six. <clears throat>